Okay, I can't not just talk a little bit about the Declaration of Sentiments with you. Like, this is like the beginning of women saying, we want the right to vote. So it's such a big deal. Um, I love the video clip that you've got with this. It's not the, I couldn't find the full clip that I show you in class. It's just, it's just a little short. It's most of it. Um, but I, I've been showing that forever. So I'm glad I found at least the section I could show you. Um, I love um, several of the points the film clip makes, right? That um, they, that uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton's voice shook, right? Because she never talked in front of people before. I love that um, Frederick Douglass um, stands up and says, you know, we, we gotta, women have to have the right to vote. Um, and then uh, ultimately even kind of what a, you know, for us to see just sort of what a discussion it was. Like all these other things are taken for granted that you would include in there, but the vote, like, uh, I don't know, should we include that? So I think that's just important for us to think about. Um, I've numbered some of the key, well, I've numbered the things that they outline here on the Declaration of Sentiments just so it makes it easier to talk about in class. So the first one, right, is where they say, we want the right to vote. Uh, second, they say that they have to submit to laws that they didn't have a voice in. The third one is really disappointing because when you're trying to get rights, you shouldn't try to degrade somebody else, which is what they do in the third one. They say it's not really fair that, like, um, what are the words they use? That the most ignorant and degraded men, natives and foreigners, have the right to vote when they do not. So that one's a little unfortunate. Um, and it will... Uh, foreshadow, something we're going to see when black men get the right to vote before white women. Um, we'll talk about that in two or three more lectures. Um, four, um, she doesn't have any representation in Congress. Uh, five, if she's married uh, in the law, she's civilly dead. We talked about Married Women's Property uh, Acts, but that's just only in New York right now. It hasn't gone throughout the whole country. Uh, he's made her dead. Uh, in the eyes of the law, if she's married, um, that's um, Ethan Corvair. Um, he can take all of her property, even the wages she owns. Uh, she's morally an irresponsible being, is number seven. What that's saying there is if she commits a crime in the presence of her husband, now this wouldn't work for something like murder, but if she committed like, you know, robbery or something in the presence of her husband, she could argue that her husband told her to do it. And it would be very unlikely that the court would decide against her because if the court decided against her, then the court would be saying that she wasn't supposed to listen to her husband. Um, so that's what number seven is saying is, right? That in theory, she could argue my husband made me do it and the court would have to like accept that. Um, in in um, issues of divorce, she'll um, lose her children because if she's a bad wife, she's obviously a bad mother. Um, if she's sing single, um, the government taxes her um, and um, makes a profit off of it. Um, he has all of the best jobs, right? Um, and any of the jobs that have like prestige or money, she doesn't have access to. She doesn't have access to higher education. She doesn't have access to positions in the church. 13, he has created a false public sentiment by giving the world a different code of morals for men and for women. This is talking about like the double sexual standard, and of course that still exists today. Um, 14, um, argue there that he's like acting like God himself. Um, and ultimately all of this destroys her self-confidence. As the film tells you, uh, about 60 or so women and 30 or so men signed this document. Um, just to give you an idea of how long this is gonna take, all of those people with the exception of one will be dead when women get the right to vote. So of all the people that signed this document in 1848, all of them are dead, but one, when we get the right to vote in 1920. And I should add there are two, of course, it's really white women that get the right to vote. In theory, it's all women, but as we'll see, um, it won't really be open to uh, people of color. All right, a big document. So if you've got any questions, be sure and put those in the discussion board. Take care.